Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at the friction force in terms of a graphical representation. Now remember there are two different kinds of friction forces. One where the objects are not moving, that's called the static friction force, and one where the objects are moving relative to one another. Typically they're sliding over one another and that's what we call the kinetic friction force. Now what happens initially, let's say we have a block sitting on a horizontal surface and all these examples initially are with horizontal surfaces. Later on we'll see some examples where we have objects on slant surfaces or wedges. But right now let's take a look at the simple examples. We pull with a force F and then we have the reactionary force, the friction force pulling in the opposite direction. Initially when things are not moving, when the block is simply standing still and not moving, we have a one-to-one -one correspondence. In other words, the amount of the friction force will always be equal to the amount of the force that's pulling on the block until the force of the, that's pulling on the block exceeds the maximum force the friction force can be. The friction force can be calculated by multiplying its weight or the equivalent normal force which on a flat surface is equal to weight times the coefficient of friction between the two surfaces. So the friction force is always equal to the weight mg times the coefficient of friction. In the case that the surfaces are stationary to one another, then we use the static coefficient of friction. In the case where the object is sliding over one another, then we use the kinetic coefficient of friction. And typically, the kinetic coefficient of friction is smaller than the static coefficient of friction. Now here, the slope here is always going to be equal to 1, which means that as I increase the force by which I pull on the block and make this force larger and larger and larger, the corresponding friction force, the static friction force, will become larger and larger and larger. They will be equal to one another as long as the force is less than the maximum friction force. So when I pull with a force of 10 newtons, the friction force will be 10 newtons. I pull with a force of 20 newtons, the friction force will be 20 newtons and so forth. Until eventually I pull with such a large amount of force that the the force by which I pull will exceed the maximum friction force between the two surfaces and then the object will begin to accelerate because then you'll have a net force. A second thing will happen as well. If you do that, if you take a block and you pull on it and you pull on it more and more and more, the friction force, the static friction force will, will always equal the force by which you pull and as you increase it, the difference becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and eventually the force by which you pull will exceed the friction force, the static friction force, and then the object begins to move, it begins to accelerate. And then immediately the friction force will take a jump downward. It will jump now to the kinetic friction force, which is always less, pretty well, always less than the static friction force. So all of a sudden the object will lunge forward because now all of a sudden from having a zero difference between the force and the friction force, all of a sudden you have a large difference. So the, the difference here is zero, 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 and all of a sudden the difference is oh, 10 or 20 or 30 newtons. And the object will lunge forward and then at that point the object will continue to accelerate as long as the force by which you pull is greater than the force, than the friction force now offered by the kinetic coefficient of friction. So all of a sudden the friction jumps from a maximum static friction force down to the maximum kinetic friction force and then the object begins to accelerate as long as you maintain that net force. The net force is going to be the difference between the force by which you pull on the object minus the friction force pulling in the opposite direction. It's equal to zero when the force by which you pull is smaller than the maximum friction force you can have and it's greater than zero, it's going to be the difference between the two forces when the force is greater than the maximum friction force that you can have. So that's the key to the difference between the static and kinetic friction force. The static, uh, the static friction force will equal the force by which you pull as long as the force continues as the force increases until the force reaches the maximum friction force, that's a static situation, the object begins to move, the coefficient of friction all of a sudden drops to a lower amount, and now you have a bigger difference between the force by which you pull and the friction force, and the object begins to accelerate. And hopefully that will clarify the concept of a friction force and the differences between the static and kinetic friction forces.
And that's how we can see it.